Just in case you don't recognise the viewpoint, it's from the top front seat of a double-decker bus. And I'm off with my bus pass to Ipswich to pick up a certain VW campervan. Yes, that's right, she's been in dock again. The date is the 20th of January 2014, so this is the first campervan diary for this year. And let's hope it's a new start after the autumn and winter of work she's undergone. So, well, I, I hope, in fact, we've now had so much work done and I'll go into that a bit further down the road because I'll give the, give the uh, old motor a little bit of a warm-up, see how she's feeling and we'll go from there. Well, since we bought the old girl, we've spent quite a lot, really, on, on the vehicle. I think the big problem that we had is that I didn't realise just how much stuff can go wrong when the vehicle's off the road for two to three years. Really, I think that's the root cause of most of the problems, because if it had been run normally, then some of the things that have all gone wrong at once would have gone wrong in due course and they could have been fixed one thing at a time without it costing them an arm and a leg. When we started with the van we had it given a thorough service, all the bits that needed doing were done and some extra bits and pieces as well. Like for instance they had to put a new water pipe on, the water pipe that goes all the way around the engine and that cost about a hundred quid. Uh, and they also had to put a new starter and motor on and that was about 95 quid. So before you've started I think we spent 500 quid then. The next thing to go wrong was the carb really. We had constant starting problems and lots of running problems. Um, the van really didn't want to run properly so in the end we looked at what we could do and the best solution seemed to be to put on a Weber carb, get rid of the old Pierberg carbs and put a new one on but that meant it had to go the carb had to go to a specialist converter who actually supplied a new conversion plate to mount the carburetor and the carburetor itself he supplied and that's a brand new Weber carburetor so by the time you put it all together it's another five or six hundred quid now <laughs> what's next well we had a cooling system problem, you may remember, um, and it turned out that what was really happening, it wasn't that catastrophic, but um, what was really happening was that the, the cooling system had kind of clogged up. <clears throat> the radiator, I think, was blocked in many places. And what happened when I took the van for a long run down to Dover and back, about 380 something miles, um, what happened was that most of those jams, block ups, whatever you like to call them, in the radiator uh, actually got opened up and the van sucked in water <laughs> or coolant. Um, so eventually we took it back to the garage. What they did was emptied everything out. They got piles and piles of rust and rubbish out of it. But they then did a proper pressure test on the rad and it all worked. The cooling system was fine probably thanks in part to the new pipe that we put on and um, that cleaned up nicely and in fact uh, when they did some tests across the radiator they found the radiator was heating up evenly and throughout its whole area which I think was a problem. The van used to get hot or to working temperature very quickly indeed it now takes much longer and I suspect that's because there's a lot more water going around the system. And finally this time, well what's happened this time? We had a small blow in the cooling system which was gradually getting worse and I couldn't really identify where it was coming from. I'd asked the guys to look at it when they looked at the radiator and they'd forgotten and I'd forgotten as well, I'd always sort of had them look at it then. In fact what then happened is I was going to take it in one day and on the day I took it in <laughs> the clutch went. Oh, what joy, you can't believe this, can you? And so I got to Ipswich with the help of the AA. <laughs> and um, the guys had to put a new clutch in and they also had to put new exhaust pipes in from the uh, actual cylinder outlets, exhausts, to the exhaust silencer box. So it looks as if 
that's all back to normal. The sound of the engine is lovely. It sounds just fine. And I'm hoping against hope now that having spent 17 or 1800 quid on the van, it's going to give me a summer of enjoyment. Who knows? We'll give it a go. So, here we are at the beginning of 2014. The MOT isn't due until around August, so that should give me plenty of time to get around and do a bit more travelling. So let's see where we can get to. See you soon.